When I was younger, like in medical school, I had a bike and one of my friends and I would go on bike rides maybe 10 or 15 miles at the most. And then I got married, started a career, started a family. I really didn't bike at all, but my wife had always been a cyclist. And she would do these bike rides without me. And I always said, yeah, I'll do it with you someday. I'll do it with you someday. But I never got around to it. 2013, uh, I started noticing um, I was getting pain shooting down the back of my legs. Um, more on, I think, the left side than on the right side. Um, and especially when I picked up something heavy or when I tried to run and my feet would hit the floor and that jarring uh, sensation would, would cause pain to shoot down the back of both of my legs. As an anesthesiologist, I work with every surgeon that works at our hospital. I know who does a good job. Dan and I were actually uh, co-residents at Shock Trauma. So we trained together in early 1990s. I knew Charlie from residency, uh, so I called his office and made an appointment. Before, he had about seven millimeter uh, uh, spinal anesthesis, which moved with the flexion extension. And it was at that point that I said, look, Charlie, I really need you to fix this because it's keeping me from doing the things that I want to do. As an anesthesiologist, I have to push patients around on stretchers. Um, I have to help move the patient from the stretcher to the OR table sometimes and from the OR table back to the stretcher sometimes. If I couldn't do that without pain, then that significantly restricted what I could do at work. But I wanted to get back to 100% functionality. Uh, but he particularly wanted to have this particular uh, surgery done because he thought that that way he's saving all his musculature. He's an active, active person. So, uh, I think he really picked you know, his procedure based on um, what he sees in the operating room. So in general, because we are actually you know, really muscle and bone and ligaments and vascular anatomy sparing procedure, the patient has pretty rapid recovery. Most of the patients, uh, in fact, they do go home uh, the next day. One thing good about this procedure is actually when you uh, put the cage in and you expand the disc space, you actually reduce the uh, spinal anesthesis, in this case, at least more than uh, uh, almost 75%. I noticed that just laying in bed or sitting in a chair that I didn't have the pain that I had had before. I was back at work in three weeks. Um, I had a back brace, which helped a lot. But gradually, over the next two or three weeks after that, uh, I started using the back brace less and less. But then after my back surgery, that summer, I felt good enough that I started training for a century bike ride. One time, I remember, not, uh, pretty soon after we did surgery, maybe three, four weeks surgery, he came to my operating room and sort of sheeply, sheeply <laughs> smiling, and asking me, Charlie, guess what I did? I said, what? He goes, I went on a bike road for like 100 miles last week. I said, you did what? <laughs> my surgery was in April, and that October, I did my first century with my wife. Uh, and it took us about six hours, almost six hours of riding time. I, I was very proud of myself, my wife was proud of me, and it was just, it was very fulfilling to be able to do something like that. Uh, and a century bike ride, if you don't know, is a hundred mile bike ride. It's usually an organized type of ride where there's rest stops every 20 miles or so. We've been doing that uh, bike ride every year uh, since, Dr. Park is an excellent surgeon. I've known him for a long time. Um, he takes excellent care of his patients. He truly cares about his patients. I wish I had been able to get my back fixed sooner than I did, um, because I think that I probably missed out on some stuff uh, because I waited. Without this surgery, no, I don't, I don't think I would have tried to do a century bike ride.